<laughs> Again, I'm Vicki Landers, and I am um, a part of the team for disability equality in education, um, as, as well as my disability pride hat. I wear that hat as well. Um, I'm very proud to be a part of this team, which is spreading disability um, equality into classrooms K through 12. Um, I am going to do my best to give him a, um, a good introduction. Um, I'm going to be introducing Alan Holdsworth, who is a singer and a songwriter and activist. Um, he was born in Salford in 1952. Um, Alan goes by the stage name Johnny Crescendo. His music addresses civil rights, disability pride, and social injustices, making him a crucial voice of the movement and one of the best loved performers on the disability arts circuit. In 1990 and 92, Alan co-organized the Block Telethon, a high profile media and community of campaign, which culminated in the demise of that televised fundraiser. It was during the campaign that he coined the widely used phrase, piss on pity, which features uh, a number of NDACA deposits. Um, his albums have included Easy Money, Pride, and not dead yet, all which celebrate disabled identity and critique disabling barriers and attitudes. Since 2004, Johnny has lived in Philadelphia where he continues his work as a performer, a campaigner, and as my boss. Here is Alan Holdsworth. Hi, hi folks, happy Disability Pride. It's so good to be here on the second uh, virtual event. Hopefully next year we will have a live event and we can all have some real fun and give some big hugs. Uh, my name's Alan Holdsworth and I am the director of Disability Equality in Education. And that, that we were charged four years ago to actually try and uh, challenge the stigma of disability to, to end the stigma of disability in education. And the way that we went about that, and we had so and we were had funds from the, uh, the Pennsylvania Developmental Disabilities Council. We continue to have their great support uh, to do to do the work that we're trying to do. And we're going to be talking today about three or four things. Okay, so our mission, as I said, was that. And the way that we approached that mission was to try and bring the conversation around disability into everyone's lives as they grow up. So even from pre-K, kids can talk about disability. And by talking about it, disability becomes kind of a natural thing it's not something which is to be looked at or to be pointed at it's just hey you know it's, 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 we're all part of the same community so that was kind of like our our goal and um we um created a website with resources and uh i'm not going to go through the whole website i'm just going to quickly share the screen and show you that here, here is the website and uh on, on here, as you can see, you can go to educators on here, you can get lesson plans, you can get different types of programming, you can do workshops, um, and we also have resources like other advocacy organizations that we like, lesson plan resources, and disability videos we like, and, and a really great disability book list. All of these have been read by disabled people. Oh, and by the way, I am wearing a red hat because it's my performance hat. And I'm also wearing one of the green Disability Pride t-shirts from a couple of years ago. Um, so just in case, uh, and I'm a white man um, who's a disabled person who uses a wheelchair. Um, the, um, what we've done with lesson plans is we're trying to just say when a teacher's teaching a lesson, they actually include disability in it. Uh, so for instance, like when they, if they were doing a lesson on President's Day, they should remember that 11 of the of, our, of the presidents of the United States were actually disabled people, not just FDR. The other thing that is really interesting, we're just finding out that in the Native American culture, there's no such word as disability or impairment. They just didn't understand that 
that concept of of the other as, as a disabled person being something different to anybody else. So I'm going to go back off the off the screen share now. Not, as I say, I'm not going to go through all of this, but as you can see, you can just down uh, just very quickly. Lesson plan. And this is how you get a lesson plan, and there they all are. So you can go through all the, all the different grades, and all, all the grades have different lesson plans, and we're creating more and more each day. Uh, stop sharing the screen, and um, so we have that. And the other thing we've learned over the last four years since we've been doing this is that it's really great to create a calendar of events. And I think this is something which I know that Disability Pride is doing in, in the wider community. But we feel that the school community can also do this. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that later on with some of the ideas that we have. But, you know, so last year we actually worked with Vicky and Disability Pride to create the uh, really great event on International Day of Disabled People, the very first international, uh, you know, 27 hours, 24 hour event, uh, which, went, which went around the world. Um, and that, that was called Thrive Aid. And we plan to celebrate International Day in schools uh, every year. Uh, but not only, in the, not only just the, like the disabled events, it's also just like, you know, like when you do the, uh, you know, welcome to school day, you know, that should have a disability aspect into it. When, when you're doing the graduation, they should be thinking about well, how do how are disabled people being represented here, but also like in science fairs and in all sorts of different things that the schools do, there's usually a disability aspect to it. So in in, in the K to twelve, that's what we're going to be attempting to do. This you know, it, it, we, we have been doing, and we're going to carry on doing it. We've also done the same thing in colleges, uh, and we are now working with lots of colleges to see whether they can set up a calendar of events that could be a film festival at one point it could be a music thing uh, uh, thing it could be a pride parade uh, that, that that's on the campus and you know and, and we've, we, we've been learning how to do that too one of the other successful things we've been doing is uh, helping uh, disabled students going into, into the college to set up a disability pride club so they, they, they would have a, a club and they would, we have some fairly good clubs that actually meet almost every two weeks and I'm still meeting through the summer because they like it so much. And it's great for peer support and it's great also for advocacy, but it's also great. It's, it's also great like in terms of just fun. They have some really fun stuff that goes on like quizzes. They have uh, open mic nights. They have comedy nights. They, 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 they and it's kind of just like having a, a bunch of people who kind of get it at the college and you can go to it from time to time. The sort of things that we use in terms of the whole kind of curriculum thing, we, we kind of look at disability history, we look at, you know, we look at art, and that, that we're, that I think the next segue is going to be about how we start to use disability art in schools. Uh, we look at language through books and sort of, uh, and look at images through art as well and representation. And we also look at the way that policies work within the school, but also within the school districts and within the whole of Pennsylvania, so, which will promote inclusive practice. Um, so that's really kind of like what, what D does. We're going to have a Q&A at the end of this. So if you have questions, we'll try and get back to them if you want to stick them in the chat. But we can kind of have a look at them to um, make sure um, uh, we, 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 uh, keep, we get to you. And um, I now, it is now my pleasure, it is now my pleasure to uh, hand this over to uh, one of my best friends in, um, in the whole world. Um, we've been working together now since the very first Disability Pride Philadelphia, which was uh, nine years ago. And it's, you know, and even before that, we were working a little bit. So, um, and uh, we, it, it's so great to, to work with somebody who's so, got so much energy and so much talent uh, as, as Vicky. And one of the, and Vicky's going to actually introduce what we've asked her to do this year. Or one of the things, one of the many things we've asked her to do, which we are super, super excited about. Uh, and we, you're going to meet some great young people. Disable, oh, who, um, okay. um, you're going to meet some great young people as well in this in this next segue. So over to you, Vicky, Doyen of Disability Pride. <laughs> 
Thank you, Alan. Thank you for that introduction of disability equality in education. Um, oh, you are sharing your screen. No, it's actually good. There you go. So I am going to, I had the, the pleasure of working with Alan, of course, like you heard for the last um, nine years or so. Um, and last year, he invited me to work with him on a special project um, through the a grant through the PADDC or the Pennsylvania Developmental Disability <laughs> Council um, and um, work on disability art um, for children age uh, K through 12 in the schools. Um, and it was, it, it was so exciting to me um, to be able to do that and to think about pride events um, for kids K through 12. Um, so I am so honored to have been work to be working with this project. Um, I'm going to kick off very quickly by telling you what disability art is um, for those who don't know or who might need a little refresher on it. Um, so what is disability art? Disability art or disability arts is any art, theater, fine art, film, writing, music, or club that takes disability as its theme <clears throat> or whose context relates to disability. Alan Sutherland, a famous artist from the UK says, quote unquote, disability arts is art. It is seriously intentioned creative work, poems, poetry, oh, I'm sorry, poems, paintings, music, comedy, theater, or whatever made with some sort of aesthetic purpose. It is not a hobby to keep the cripples hands busy and it is not therapy, end quote. Disability art is about exploring the conceptual ideas and the physical realities of what, is it, what it is like to be disabled or concepts relating to the word. Disability art is different from disability in the arts which refers more to an act of participation or representation of disabled people in the arts rather than the context of the work being about disability. Art made by disabled person does not automatically become disability art just because it's done by a disabled person. Disability arts reflects the experience of disability and there have always been disabled people who have made art, and some of them were quite famous. Homer, Alexander Pope, John Milton, Ludwig van Beethoven, Vincent van Gogh. But those artists treated their disability as an impediment to their work. We do not recognize Milton's sonnet on his blindness, which treats his impairment as a burden that he has to bear as disability art. Disability arts regards the experience of disability not as an impediment, but as an appropriate and fruitful subject for artistic work. Through this grant has allowed us to design workshops that were open to disabled artists to come and to learn about disability art and the parameters of the new project. The project was to design disability art for kids, K through 12, that could be taught into schools um, that um, represented disability art. Our goals were to reduce stigma around disability, promote disability art as an art form, employ PA disabled artists to design artwork for K through 12 schools, and to build pride in disabled students through art. I am happy to have um, three of our four artists here today to work that worked on their art. Um, and what I would like to do is to call them now to turn their mics and their cameras on. Um, Wendy, Ian, and Jade. Um, Give me one second. Let me make sure that everybody is here. 
There we are. All of us are on screen. Thank goodness. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to spend about, you know, a minute or so um, just describing, um, you're introducing and describing yourself. So I'm going to start with Wendy. Hey, I'm Wendy Elliott Vanderveer. Um, I'm a white woman um, in a wheelchair. Um, I have red hair, I'm wearing red lipstick, and I'm wearing my purple Disability Pride PA shirt, which I love. It's got long sleeves and uh, buy, buy more sh uh, shirts like this. Um, and I'm wearing glasses, and Vicki always teases me that it doesn't look like I'm wearing glasses, but, <laughs> but I am. <laughs> And I'm going to, how about uh, Jade Ramos, AKA one o o. Hey, I'm Jade. Um, wow, I moved a painting because I thought it'd be in frame and it's not. So I might fix that. Um, <laughs> but it's one of the ones that I didn't submit for the uh, proposal. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, my name is Jade. I am legally blind. And um, I went to school for art so I started making my disability art in college and that was a whirlwind uh dealing with a lot of different reactions so uh mm -hmm. I'm glad <clears throat> that you guys see the value in what I do because uh that's pretty nice so I was glad that I got to work on this can you quickly describe yourself yeah um I am a light-skinned female Puerto Rican and I'm wearing a black hat with glasses that are gold um, and I have the latest disability pride virtual PA t-shirt on Woo. <laughs> PA so that's nice I own things with this now because I don't have any from Jersey when I used to live there so very good <laughs> very good so Ian Hi, um, my name is Ian Fay. I am on the autism spectrum. Um, I'm white. I have a beard that's like red. Um, I have um, hair that's dark brown some days, dark blonde some days. It can't really make its decision most of the time. Um, I've been in about spoken word poetry. I've been doing that for about six years. Yeah, June 3rd would have been like six year anniversary of that. And uh, I'm excited to be here and like talk about the work that I've done over the past couple months. Thank you all three of you for being here with me today. Um, I'm so excited about the work. It's in the press room at the moment getting printed and it's just so exciting. I can't wait to, to for us to get our hands on it all. Um, so I have some questions for you and I'm gonna ask each of you the question and give you time to answer. So I'm gonna just go in the same order that I, that I just did. So Wendy, can you please tell us briefly about your medium that you worked in for the project? Okay, uh, first I just wanna thank um, Disability Equality and Education and the PA Developmental Disabilities Council for making this opportunity possible. And thank you to Vicki Landers for all that you do all year round uh, to showcase disability arts and celebrate disability pride. I'm so grateful for you and all that you do. Thank you. So my art, um, I, I focus on um, creating cartoons uh, where I use um, color pencil, micron pens, very detailed uh, kind of realistic or semi-realistic uh, figurative work uh, using using color. Uh, that's for my cartoons. And for the coloring book, I created uh, simple line drawings uh, for, you know, for children to color in. So for my disability arts project, I basically created a combination uh, coloring and storybook designed for very young children um, in the kindergarten to second grade levels. And the theme of my story is basically that disabled people can do most things that non-disabled people can do. Uh, sometimes just in a, in a different way. And I communicate this with simple, in a simple, fun, friendly way with bright colors, simple lines, and very few words to make it accessible uh, for young children. And I also use humor and animals uh, in the work to help keep the kids 
uh, interested and engaged. That's great. Yes, you can't have your the things without your service animal. <laughs> right, and this time I put my cats in there too. So. Yeah, she did. <laughs> I'm at their service though. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to ask the same question to Jade, and I'll say it again. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, please tell us briefly about your medium that you worked in with your project. Okay, so. Um... I tend to work in a lot of layers and colors as you can see in the wall behind me. I've, I've done all this, but um, uh, I use a lot of paint markers and paint pens. Um, it's a lot easier to control than a brush. Uh, so it, it's very easy. And I use stencils and text a lot in my work. So for the project, I wanted to um, incorporate both of those things with images and text instead of just usually using text. Um, this is one of the busier ones I did for the grant, but it didn't really, I thought it was too busy for the focus of, I wanted it to be on disability visibility and be graphic and bold and colorful and bright, but also still like uh, honing on a message that can be, you know, um, quickly, I guess, uh, what is it, observed, or whatever, because I did it for grades uh, five through eight. And uh, I remember a lot of middle school spent me in the hallway talking to my friends by our lockers and not wanting to go to class. So I would also procrastinate a little bit by staring at the art on the walls. So <laughs> um, it was interesting to think back in, into what I would want to know as a kid that I didn't get to see any of the, the stuff that I'm, I now have knowledge of, and <clears throat> that would have been nice to know back then, because it would have saved me a lot of heartache and probably discussions about ableism with teachers. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to ask Ian the same question, and I'm going to repeat the question. Um, please tell us briefly about your medium that you worked in for your project. Okay, so... Um... As I said in my introduction, I have been doing spoken word poetry and performance poetry for um, about the past six years. And if you're, if you're not familiar with that medium, essentially what it is is that I write poetry, like I write my own work. Um, and then I would go up on a stage, well, not really a stage now because we're, we have been through a quarantine. <laughs> Until recently, my medium has been a bit more visual than my peers here so yeah um but yeah I would essentially perform it in front of people so it's sort of like a mix of like um writing but also a bit of like performance art as well so yeah that's mostly what I've been using for this project and um I've been for this project in particular I use a specific form of poetry it, form being like stuff like limericks, ballads, stuff like that. Um, I use a specific form called like the golden shovel where you take a line from basically any sort of piece of media. It could be like a book, it could be a poem, another poem, or it could be a movie or anything. And you essentially lay it out on the right side of the piece. Um, so when the entire piece is complete, you would see that line being read down the right side of the poem. Um, and essentially what this does is that it kind of makes that line like the foundation of your work when you write it in this way. Um, and this is like visually when you look at it on the page, it's also like tonally or like subject wise, it could be that way. And it's just like an interesting way to sort of have sort of discussion with other works that may have come before it. So yeah, that's what I've used for this project right here. Thank you so much for that, yes. Okay, so I'm going to ask my second set of questions. Um, <clears throat> and again, we'll just <clears throat> keep it in the same um, area, <clears throat> in the same lineup, sorry. <clears throat> Um, how did you feel after completing this project? Wendy. Well, I felt, you know, really 
great and optimistic after I completed it because uh, I felt that you know the work could be done to do some good <laughs> in the world to help educate, um, especially very young children about disability issues. And it was this is very exciting for me to you know to do the work because I felt that it could change mindsets and, and working with young kids before they develop uh, any negative attitudes about disability that I could get to them with my art to help, you know, to make a difference. So that was, um, you know, I felt very optimistic and uh, empowered uh, by making the art. Thank you. And Jade, how did you feel after completing this project? Um, also very excited because I feel like um, usually, you know, being in school or just making art in general, there are a lot of times I just make it to make it and, and I'll put it out on social media, but in terms of it, like going out into the world more physically and stuff, that doesn't really happen, uh, <laughs> that often. So yeah, I was just like, wow, it was good to know that all the work is not just going to like sit in my room or like, you know, like actually go somewhere and be seen by more than a thousand something people. Like that's pretty sweet. I hear you. And Ian, how did you feel about, feel after completing your work? Um, I kind of share the sentiment of what everyone else has said. I was, it was really exciting actually. Um, uh, one, it was, a lot of like the work that I included myself for my project and like what I wrote about, um, it was honestly, um, the line, the lines that I used for the golden shovel were from, um, a sort of prominent autism speaks ad that very much affected me when I was, um, around middle school. And there were like a couple ideas that were like said there that like, um, I felt like I was like kind of contending with in my mind and like felt like we would have made for like pretty good pieces, but like, I just didn't really know how to like write them down. And this actually gave me a good opportunity to finally do that. So it felt like very liberating and also like empowering to do that. And also very exciting because um, as Jade said, this is like the first time that like my work is gonna exist outside of like me as it were, because like before and I felt like, yeah, before I had to like, um, or I felt like there was like a workshop that I was in where um, we were talking about uh, putting your pieces on video and they were saying like, there's something like very like powerful about like, you know, having your pieces exist in like another place and like you not having to be there to like present it, it can still like live on in other spaces. So yeah, that's, I like that. That's great. Yes, yeah, so I think it's, it, it's, it's, they're going to make such an impact um, in the schools. I mean, just some of the folks, so not very many people have seen this work. Um, it is going to be available very soon. Um, uh, but I have to tell you the conversations I've had with the press, with the print shop um, about the work as they're working to do what they have to do with it um, have been amazing conversations and have opened their eyes to a, a lot of things. Um, so that to me is super exciting because it's already changing people's lives and it's still not like. Not like really like out there. Out <laughs> yeah. There. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is really great. Um, so the last question I'm going to ask um, is um, what does disability pride mean to you? And I'm gonna start with Wendy. Uh, disability pride means to me being proud of who you are, exactly uh, the way you are, and celebrating our, our disabilities. It's, you know, it's part of who we are. It's a normal, natural part of um, existence, and we should be proud of who we are and, and what we can contribute uh, to the world. And Jade, what does disability pride mean to you? Well, to like echo Wendy's statement, but also... Uh... Yeah, the fact that like like I touched on before, you know, you grow up thinking like, oh, you're the only one and there's whatever and you learn to do things a certain way that could sometimes be dangerous for you to partake in that behavior over time, both physically and with your mental health. And uh, yeah, a lot of my like pride comes from the fact that I stopped doing that and like 
I solely listen to like my needs and my body and like do what's best for me at my pace and the way that I do it, regardless if other people are like, oh, that's weird. Like, um, and you know what? I've taught my family how to use certain features on their phones now that they're getting older and their vision sucks. So, and they were just so surprised that their phones could do this thing. It's like, wow, you don't pay attention to how I use technology then because like should have been, that's such a simple thing. Like, yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. And Ian, what does disability pride mean to you? Um, for me, it's recognizing the fact that without my disability, I would not be the person that I am today and recognizing that fact that I would not trade this life for any other, that I still am very appreciative of, um, like not even despite my disability, but because of my disability that um, I am who I am. I've done the work that I have and I am surrounded by the people that I am. Yeah. Yep. And you should be extremely proud of who you are. But can I say something to add on to that? That reminded me of a sure. conversation I had with a couple of my friends, you know, hypotheticals. What if you weren't <laughs> the way that you were? And it's like, but I was born this way. Like, I don't know any other thing. They're like, yeah, but what if? Like, I don't know. I can't imagine what that would be like. What do you want me to say? Yeah, I'm going to like, they're like, but what if you could fix your vision? Maybe not even start over. Just fix your eyesight. Would you still do what you do? And I'm like, well, I don't think so because it all stems from the fact that I don't see that great and everything else is through that lens. So I, I wouldn't <laughs> be making the art that I did. They're like, yeah, you would. It'd just be better. It's like, no, because then I wouldn't be in the community. So like, I shouldn't be making that type of art unless it's <laughs> on behalf of them, I guess, and whatever. But I was just like, oh, so it's, and then I flip it on them about, okay, what if, what if it's the other way around? And they're like, oh, like, ooh, I don't want to think about that. It's like, okay. I don't know why they don't see like the correlation between the two, but. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Get that all the time. I was. You know, it's like, what if you weren't disabled? Well, what if you were? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm going to ask a question with a question. It's always my favorite thing to do. Right. <laughs> it's I always tell people, I'm like, Lady Gaga, I was born this way. <laughs> this is who I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Alan would like to jump in and say something very quickly. Um, Alan, can you turn your camera on for me? I can Hi guys. find you. Hold on one second. There you are. Hi. Uh, I, I just looked at the conversation. I was laughing a lot in that. I, I'm so proud of you guys. Just uh, I, it's so exciting to to you know have young talent. You know who? I mean, the, the biggest thing was you you, 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 you yeah, it's in your bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's in your head. And now it's going to go out there to all these different schools, and it's just it's just fabulous. You know, and I. I, I I can imagine myself, you know, years and years ago, writing my first, you know, disability rights song, which was called I Love My Body, by the way. And, um, um, you know, people liked it. They couldn't believe it. Yeah, they, then they started booking me for doing that kind of genre, if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, I, I, I hope you have a great journey. And this is just the start of the journey, you know. Uh, and because, like, we're all sitting here on this Zoom thing, um, you know, I mean, hopefully we'll all get to meet at some point and, uh, you know, just like hang out uh, because the way that the disability arts community started in England was, you know, we had this like cabaret night. Now, a cabaret seems like, ah, well, I'm a visual artist, but the poet, uh, Ian, you'd be fine on that, yeah? Um, but, you know, what we did was we put the artwork around Slow down the just a little. Slow yeah, down just a little. Slow down. In <laughs> interpreters have to be able to... Okay. Interpret. I, I, when I get excited, I talk faster. I'm I happy. know. So, but um, when I'm thinking, I talk very slow. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, we put the artwork up at the same time as the cabaret was going on, so people could listen to the performance art and then have the visual art and other art around it. So, and then if if, if it wasn't like that, we would have an interview with somebody. You know, if, it, if that didn't fit, so we didn't give you an actor uh, on, on on that night. You know, so. I, I just hope we are 
you know, like I know me and Vicky uh, want to create a, like a disability pride community, and we just want. I just want to say it's a pleasure that uh, to, to welcome you guys to the community. But I, I've got one question, and then anyone can go. I'm not going to go in turns. I mean, how did it feel for you to to um, I'm trying to be an artist now. How, how did it feel as a disabled person to reach into yourself to express something through your art? Was that comfortable or was it, or what feelings did you have when you were doing it? I, I, I know that's kind of a complex question. Um, how did it feel? Anybody want to take that? I, I can take this real quick. Um, I would say now, um, well, if you talk to me when I was like first starting out, I don't feel like I would be very comfortable doing it because um, I feel like when I started out um, writing spoken word, I had this issue where like, do I look autistic enough to talk about autism in my poems? And like, you know, it sounds like, and like, you know, in hindsight, like that's stupid. You shouldn't be thinking about that. But like, it was something I really like kind of, thought about because um, I don't really look like what autism looks like to a lot of people. And after a while, I kind of realized that, you know, that is my story and I should absolutely be talking about that. And um, not only that, but I feel like I was kind of like one of the few um, people on the spectrum that was even in like my poetry community at the time. So um, I felt kind of a need to like kind of bring that story to light or at least mine um, so yeah now I'm like very much comfortable with it I'm like this is who I am and you know that's just it is what it is yeah I, I just think just to respond to that yeah I think I, I've seen your stuff I mean Vicky showed me I'm one of the few people who've seen it and uh, it's um it's as scary as some of my early stuff, that's all I can say, but I'm so proud of it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's right, in, it's in your face, it's challenging, it's not going to be something which people are going to be comfortable with, and that's okay, that's totally, totally okay. So, um, you know, I, I, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, I, I've seen the stuff, so thank you for that, Ian. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. In, my, in my art, I, I paint and I draw my own reality. You know, disability is always... The subject and me personally is the subject, you know, of a lot of it. So I'm I'm very comfortable, you know, doing that. And I think it makes the artwork authentic because I'm telling a real, you know, personal story. Um, I'm not uh, look, looking at something from the outside. Um, so and I think it can be more impactful. I'm not again. I'm not speaking for any anyone else with a particular disability. I'm just telling, you know, my own personal story. So I think it it makes it real. Um, it's, it's it's authentic. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, your, your, your book is so mar marketable, I have to say, just to let you know. I mean, you know, never, we, we, we're going to take that into schools, but I know there's like thousands and thousands of people, who, parents who want that book, and we'll, we'll think about how we can get to do that. <laughs> yes. Have a think about it. Mm -hmm. okay. So, Jade? Jade, do you want to yeah. say something? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say from, like, I've always been into art. I've always been the artistic person, right? Uh, so, but it didn't turn into the disability stuff until after I got my eye removed and I went into college and I started documenting my process of healing. And I would say um, in discussing that, like, even something as simple with my family, like explaining my vision, how I see, like, what it's like, I've never got to do that so and even now it's hard to articulate things but I could show it through all the art that I make whether it's about myself or um you know the words of others that like I get permission from you know to talk on their behalf but like um it's so cathartic and just nice to know that like yeah I I now I'm making up for all the years of like <laughs> Just keeping quiet and not doing anything. That's so cool. I, I, I can totally relate to that as well. Like uh, I used to say before I 
the way I'd introduce I love my body, I'd say, I used to have a good leg and a bad leg. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, you know what I'm saying? Now yeah. I, no, I just got two legs, man, you know? Uh, and it was that whole kind of cathartic thing which did it. I love your work as well. It's so okay. kind of passionate, as you know, it really is. I can't wait for people to see it. I really can. Right. And, and that, that, thank you. Thank you, Vic, if you let me jump in. Yeah, of course. So now what I'm going to say goodbye to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us today and doing this. I am going to bring on, I call my partner in crime, um, Connie Van Der Reckes, um, And she is going to talk to us about the next section of the project. So hey, thank you. artists, congratulations. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. I'm really proud of the work that you did. And as a longtime arts administrator um, uh, and arts educator, I really loved being involved in your process and your product. So thank you very much. So um, I'm going to talk really briefly about the next part of the project. We had uh, four artists all together. You met three of them. And um, with their artwork, um, I got to kind of interview and, and see their process as it was going along. And my job was to create an arts education unit with lesson plans on um, disability art. Um, for the age group that they that they chose, which meant looking at our PA standards in arts and humanities and connecting those standards to um, what I would call the Lincoln Center model of arts education that's been around for over 30 years. And basically what that arts model, arts education model looks like is that you have um, three lesson plans. Uh, the first lesson plan, you introduce the topic. And for us, we're really talking about disability art. So first we have to introduce what disability is. Um, I also include what ableism is um, because um, we live in an ableist society. So it's important to recognize what ableism is. Um, then I talk about disability art. And so, the audience, the students, have a framework of what the overarching theme is. In the second lesson, they get to meet the artists. They get to meet um, uh, the artist um, virtually through their medium. The artists have also written um, statements, artist statements about their work. And um, they have also created little videos about their work. So students have an opportunity to really um, dive in deep with the artist's work and also view and experience the artist's work. Um, and then the third um, lesson plan is, a, again, a continued um, dive uh, in with the artist's medium. But now we look at reflection as a big tool in this lesson. So. What did the art mean to the student? How can they, um, how, how does that influence who, how they think about themselves, how they think about maybe someone that they know with a disability or themselves with a disability? And um, if they're an artist, um, maybe they'll produce some work as well. So those are the three lesson plans that go along with each unit. And the beauty of um, a disabled arts unit is that the older grades, like in high school, can actually use these four artists and their mediums to really study disability art as a unit, because it doesn't matter what age group they were doing, uh, working with, um, still their work is art. And so um, high schoolers have the um, option of just using the ones that were um, focused on high school work, or you could look at all four artists together as a unit. So that was something um, that I really enjoyed building um, in the work. And we have a lot of feedback um, in the lessons um, so that we gain information about how children are thinking about um, disability and disability arts. 
If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the um, qu question and answer section. Thank you, Connie. You're welcome. I loved working with you on this project. Yeah, it was good. It's a good project. Yes. So the last part I want to go over um, with everybody is basically, how do you get to be a part of all of this? Um, so we have, so there's a couple things. So the disability arts um, project um, is called, this is disability arts. It's an explanation mark if this is disability arts. Um, and what we're looking to do is to reach out um, and, and engage with teachers, um, students, um, administrators, um, to bring these pieces in, in Pennsylvania, to bring these pieces into their schools, to let the, let the students be able to, um, let the, I'm sorry, let the teachers teach <laughs> these lesson plans um, and use or use these as a guide to teach lesson plans around the disability arts project. Um, to also get the reactions from the kids. Um, actually, the best part of this is that these kids, they get to have these, these things. We're talking about a storybook slash coloring book. Well, each student is going to get that coloring book to take home with them. Jade put together these amazing posters and when I remember in fifth or eighth grade, like that was the time when you were sticking posters up all over your walls and the images that she has created are absolutely wonderful. And I have, students are gonna love them. They're gonna love to put them up in their houses. They're gonna see them in their classrooms and in their schools. Um, Ian has come up with a workbook that not only it tells you this, how he feels about his journey and this video that came out. Um, but it also is a teaching moment on what is golden shovel poetry? Because most of the people that I have talked to about it had no idea. And so it was a learning curve for lots and lots of us. Um, I think it's a very interesting poetry um, um, Poetry, trying to think what the word is. Um, type, um, that's probably the very wrong thing to say. But, um, and this is done through a, a collection in a, a, a very small workbook um, that is done so you could see, see what the work is, how the work became the work, Ian's actual work doing his own poetry and then space for the students to try it themselves. Um, Molly, who was, could not be here with us today, um, took us on a journey of what it was like to be a um, person with an invisible disability in high school. Uh, it's so mesmerizing and she calls the piece See me, invis invisibility. Um, it's an amazing piece. I'm wait. I can't wait for everybody to get these pieces. And again, these are going to be free for teachers and school districts and the kids to be able to use them. You can reach out to me or to Alan. Our information is in chat. One of the other things we're going to do is we're going to be taking these travel and show <laughs> on the road to any place that wants to see it. Um, I would love to put them up in your schools and have conversations around them. I would love to put it up in some of the disability great organizations that are out there. Um, maybe in a city hall. What a great way for people to actually like learn what disability art is. So there's all different ways that we can do this. The best thing you can do is to reach out to me. Um, let me know that you're interested. Um, I am Vicki Landers. You can reach me at V, 
landers dot d e e at gmail dot com. And lastly, before I wrap up and introduce, bring Alan back in, um, is that the final component is a disability arts 101 video that we um, have put together, which is going is an introduction to disability arts for anyone. And this is going to be available in September for schools and other organizations. Again, reach out to me and I'll make sure that um, I make sure that you get to um, see those, see that video. Um, it's a very interesting video on the start of disability arts, um, but it is a 101 and we are so excited that we're going to be working on some more videos for you. So I just want to thank you guys, thank my artist again and Connie for all your hard work. Um, thank you to Alan for letting us do this work and his and all of D and their um, the incredible team there. And I'm going to ask Alan to come back on for me. Hello, Alan. Hello. And I'm going to let you kick off the next section. Okay, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's super exciting. I'm, I, I can't, I, I, I just think like a school having even just one of these projects, you know, uh, for age appropriateness would be so great. And, uh, and uh, I think Connie's done a great job with the lesson plans. We've seen them, I think teachers are gonna love them. It's gonna be easy. But, and I just need to now go move it to a different kind of level because these are great things that are happening uh, but we, we really need to do systems change. In other words, it's great that some schools uh, may do the curriculum. Uh, some schools might take the art project, but it's really important, we think, that the state should um, have a statewide curriculum which includes disability. At the moment, it doesn't. And I'll talk to you about that later in terms of like where we're going with it. But because we're federal funded, what we can do as D is educate. What we're not allowed to do is lobby. So now I would like to introduce to you two of my great volunteers who are not getting paid by the government, but they just feel, and let, let me give you a bit of history. We, we actually approached the, um, we, we approached Joe Hohenstein in, in Pennsylvania, um, and we started to educate him about what a disability curriculum bill would look like so that all kids in Pennsylvania would have the opportunity through the bill to learn about disability. Now, what I can tell you is that, we, and I'll, I'll come back to this later, but uh, we were approached by the Philadelphia School District not, not very long ago, who looked at their social studies curriculum, social studies, think about that, history, all that stuff, nothing in there about disability so it's about being more visible and having a conversation in schools so we, we've been helping them draft a bill which is at the moment not actually on the house floor but is soon going to be so i want to introduce to you uh two of my other best bestest friends um it's sharon who, who works with hcan which is the i hope i get this right Hallertown community action network and, and Lisa, who's actually a, a constituent of Joe, uh, 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 Representative Joe Hohenstein, who's going to talk to you about the bill uh, that, that is being proposed. And it's actually, I mean, maybe I'm stealing your thunder, but I, I, I think that um, uh, it's going to be introduced by Republicans, just to let you know. So it's, this is a very bipartisan bill. It's, it's an easy bill. It's a bit like disability pride. Disability pride is easy for politicians to get a hold of. So is this bill. Over to you guys. Thanks, Alan. Let me pull up the screen. Can you all see that? Oh. Yes. All right. I was on the wrong page there. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharon. Um, I am a white woman with long, dark hair, um, and I am wearing my disability pride PA shirt. Um, Go ahead, Lisa. 
Hi, I'm Lisa, and uh, I'm white with dark hair, uh, wearing an Aztec type print shirt with a headphone. So we're here today to talk to you about Pennsylvania House Bill 726 called the Disability Inclusive Curriculum Act. That's right, Sharon. And it's very exciting to have this bill introduced in the state of Pennsylvania. The Disability Inclusive Curriculum Act will be reintroduced to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives and referred to the Education Committee very soon. The number for this bill is 726, in honor of the anniversary of the ADA. This bill is nonpartisan and supported from both sides of the aisle. In fact, as Alan mentioned, it, it will be introduced by a Republican uh, member of the House, who is uh, the chair of the Special Education Committee, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Disability impacts over 20% of the population and knows no limits with regard to age, gender, race, sexual orientation, religion, socioeconomic status, or political affiliation. And so it makes sense that it would be a bipartisan bill. True. And according to the statistical summary done by the Pennsylvania Department of Education, 300,000 39, 283 students that were enrolled in the 2020-21 uh, school year have a disability. So what this bill is saying is everyone's history is essential, right? And what message are we sending to those students as well as those who don't yet understand their identity as a disabled person or those who may one day become disabled? Are we saying that their history and contributions don't matter? When we talk about creating a more equitable and inclusive school climate for everyone, we need to include everyone. It's that simple. It's important to engage learners in their history so that they see themselves in it. Doing so will create pride among them and will develop respect and new attitudes in the minds and hearts of the non-disabled students. So teaching about disabilities will begin to correct misconceptions and address stigma. This bill will afford so many opportunities. And really what has me pumped is having the resources and lessons developed by the experts, the disability community themselves. So Hopefully soon students will embrace diversity and develop a new comfort level for all human differences. On the screen, it says nothing about us without us, right? That's what we know is important. This bill is written with this concept at its heart and will be led by disabled people themselves. In fact, the way the language is written, at least 75% of the committee must be made up of people with disabilities. That fundamental shift in view will in turn lead to a more inclusive, equitable world for all in the future. You're so right, Sharon. Every community should learn about their members, right? What their members contributed and be recognized for their value. So HB 726 will see to it that all Pennsylvania students do. They deserve to learn about their history. They do they deserve to learn about disability through a more empowering lens rather than through deficit and burden, which is so often the case. Together, we can do something to change that, everybody. The fact that students are not taught about this community or its contributions. So once the bill has been introduced, we need you to contact your Pennsylvania state representative to urge them to sign on as a co-sponsor. On the screen is information about how to contact them. Once this, um, to find contact information for your local Pennsylvania representative, you'll be using the search. We created a shortened link for you, which is, we're gonna share it in the chat as well. It's bit.ly backslash find PA rep. And the F in find is capitalized as well as PA and the R in rep. So it's bit.ly which some people say bit.ly slash find PA rep. 
And then you want to be sure to also contact members of the education committee because they're the ones they're the first group that's going to hear this bill and will decide if it can be moved forward so the entire House of Re Representatives can hear and vote on it. And we have a link for that listed below. It's bit.ly slash PA House Education. And again, the PA is capitalized, so capital P, capital A, and the first letter of House, H, is capitalized, and the first letter of Education, E, is capitalized. And the members of the Education Committee are listed at the bottom of that page. It's up to all of us to make this happen. Thank you so much. What, what great information. Lisa. I hope. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> I was just putting uh, the information that Sharon mentioned in the chat about contacting your um, state reps. Awesome. So everyone, before we go, remember that we have to um, contact the reps in the education committee as well. And we're here to support you along the way. You can use the links provided to help you. We've also developed some uh, scripts and letter writing ideas uh, that you can take a look at as well. So whether you call, write, or make a video, or post on social media, just remember to make it as personal as you can. Yeah, we jumped ahead a little bit. So um, that part that we're talking about now is if you'd like to have your thoughts about why a curriculum is important, we are going to collect those stories, whether it's a video, a photograph, um, some text message that you want to send us. It can be communicated in any way that is best for you. Um, and you can send that to, you can email it to us at disabilityinclusivecurriculum at gmail.com. We're gonna put that in the chat as well to make sure that you have the spelling correct. Um, and you can also sign up to be updated about the bill as once it's introduced and we need more, more helpers doing, you know, calling different representatives, getting the word out, sharing on your own social media. Um, so you'll be able to um, join us on Facebook and Twitter for that, but we also have like a little email list and you can sign up for that at bit.ly slash PAHB 726 interest. PAHB is capitalized, all four of those letters, and the capital I of interest is capitalized to send to get onto that list. Um, and to find us on Twitter and Facebook um, on either platforms, it's at support PAHB 726. And those should not need to be capitalized. They would work either, either way. Um, so you can follow us and share on social media. And as uh, the bill gets introduced, we'll be putting updates there. So that's a great way to follow um, and be ready to, to jump right in and get the word out. And the one last link I have for you is um, if you'd like to read the complete drafted language, because what we've told you about today is sort of a summary. If you want to read the complete language, you can find that at bit.ly slash draft PA HB 726. The D in draft is capitalized. PA, HB are all capitalized as well. And that link will be shared in the chat also. And Lisa, if you'd like to read the final page. Thank you, Sharon. I just really am so passionate about this bill. And I wanted to let you all know that um, one way we can address stigma and misrepresentations about disability is to increase visibility. And we need to have as much representation as possible, starting at a young age and continuing through all levels of education is a key component to this necessary shift. And it's long overdue, right? Absolutely. So, Everyone, thanks so much for being here today. And I think this quote on the screen by Marcus Garvey really sums up why we are so passionate about this bill. And it states, a person without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. So let's make history together and get the Disability Inclusive Curriculum Act passed in Pennsylvania to make sure that all community members know their roots. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
So we are going to bring back our illustrious leader. <laughs> and have him say, he's going to wrap us up. He's going to tell us what the future is going to look like for disability equality in education. And then we'll go to some Q and A. So I just want to sort of go, go back to just what happened. Um, if, we, if we get this bill passed, and really, you know, um, if you know the, the Pennsylvania politics, it has a real chance now. And um, so really, this is a really good time for all organizations to get behind this bill, take a look at it. Uh, but, you know, I think that the, the, the basic bones of the bill, as long as they stay there, we can all work together on it. Um, it would be a first. It would really be a first because we have seen other states with little bits of curriculum, but never, never, never mandated to, to make sure that uh, schools. So I like doing firsts. I really like doing firsts, you know. I, I, I like ending the telephone back in the 90s. I like getting lifts on buses. I like helping to get money for the person, right? I, I, I like all that stuff about doing things first. And we've, we have a real opportunity here to, to do, do something really good, which I'm getting old. And I, I, I just think the future is, is in the kids in the classroom. And I think that if they can start to learn about some of the history, just, just feel like they're okay in a classroom, then I actually think that's a very, very powerful tool, resource uh, to have, uh, which can create generations in the future that are better for disabled people. So just wait to sort of just link that, that's why it's important. Um, some of the stuff we're gonna be doing in the next year, uh, which I haven't talked about, is we're creating school champions. So if you've got a school teacher who'd like to be one of our school champions, uh, we, we will um, support them in, in every way we can, like even like, so for instance, through the art project, uh, they can, we can bring them to the school, we'll mentor them once a month, uh, talk about the whole inclusive school curriculum, talk about whole school policy, um, and so on. But we, we would give them resources to help them and give them some support in, in doing what they're doing in their school. Even if, even if they have barriers in their school, we'd like to know what they are, so that eventually when we make a report on our project, we say these are the barriers that teachers were encountering, um, uh, encountering sorry, in their school, which, didn't, which were anti-inclusionist, if you know what I'm saying. We're going to tour the artwork, and Vic has done that one. The other thing we want to do is build our capacity as D, so we're going to do some training the trainers, so that we can have more people who can actually do the work of D, um, and um, you know, actually go out there and teach and support teachers. We want to build a network of teachers and friends and disabled people who can actually become really, really good at, you know, um, supporting inclusive education. And finally, um, we want to sort of, the uh, leading on from the last uh, segue, uh, we want to do some community advocacy training. Uh, this is about if you're a disabled person and you're campaigning for something, if, you're, if you've got like a cause that you, Want to know how to advance uh, we would like to hear from you so that we can actually um, invite you to a, a free training uh, where you'll learn quite a lot of stuff that has been already learned before for instance how to negotiate how to focus down on an issue how to get a group for instance so all those things we we, we look forward to doing in, in the next year and like i say we are working with the Philadelphia School District on developing curriculum. We'd love to work with other school districts who must be doing fairly similar curriculum stuff. I mean, everybody learns about the history of the United States, right? So we're already doing that with Philadelphia. So if you don't live in Philadelphia, if you live in wherever, in Pennsylvania or, or even outside of Pennsylvania, we'd love to sort of uh, uh, think about working with you on developing the curriculum that you have in terms of both social studies, English, maths, and everything else. I just want to say in closing, 
I am so proud of Disability Pride. I am, uh, like, I, I just can't say, it, it, it's so, so cool uh, what, 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 what we're doing and what Vicky's done um, and how inclusive it is, how accessible it is. And I really, and, and I really want to continue working with Vicky and her team and, and, and our team and Vicky's like crossing over both. So um, to develop this calendar of events so that people uh, keep, keep getting reminded year after year that we're, we're, we're around and we're not going to be seen like that. We're going to be seen like we want to be seen. And that's really, really important for me. Now, um, we're going to do a Q&A. Um, it, 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 and then at the end, I have a little film to show you. Uh, so let's let's go, let's see if we have time for the film. If not, it, that doesn't matter. I'd love to hear any questions that we have. So if so, if you'd like to ask a question, um, please raise your hand emoji. Um, so that way, we're only we only have one person at a time. Um, that helps our interpreters be able to be accessible for everybody. Um, there is one question in the chat that I saw. Let me make sure that I find it. Uh, by Sharon Janicek. I hope I said your name right. Um, and she asks, what entity will be assembling the advisory panel for this and how can we apply to serve on it? Um, well, we're, 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 well, I don't know that, but that goes to Sharon. Um, Sharon, do you want to answer that? Yeah, I'm looking up the details. One of the things important to note is that right now, um, it is just a proposed bill. It hasn't even been introduced. And so um, while the language there has some suggestions, it may change by the time it gets to the floor for a vote. Um, but I believe that it's written, I'm trying to do a quick review because we've seen so many versions of it. Uh, I believe it is the education committee that will put that together. And I think they might even be putting together a committee to put together the committee, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> the um, I'm reading through it here, but I would suggest um, looking up that that link that we put in for the draft language. Um, yeah, I, I think just to sort of a, sorry about this, Sharon. I, yes, I, think, I think there's, we, we, we've been, yesterday we were talking with Penn Tash and we, you know, they have different things, they're slightly different things. What we're saying, there are certain things that are not negotiable. Not, right. not negotiable is the 75% disabled people. Right. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of structure to what's listed here, um, so that so um, we're that's feeling that's pretty that's good. Oh, wait, wait, Alan, you have to let Sharon finish. Yeah. yeah. So I'll actually read through real quick um, this list of 14 different groups, and amongst them, you know, 75% um, total have to be disabled people. Um, so there will be representatives from the State Board of Education, Special Education Advocates, uh, Special Education Advisory Panel the Pennsylvania Training and Technical Assistance Network, school districts, intermediate units, private schools, statewide professional teacher associations, individuals, individuals with disabilities, students with disabilities, school entities that provide instruction to students with disabilities, charter schools, Pennsylvania charter schools for the deaf and blind, and approved private schools. And again, of that group, it's 75% at least disabled people. So not just um, people who, you know, um, don't have a lot of personal insight to this. And I think the other thing is it, we, we talked about, well, I, I'm English, so I, I talked about cross disability, which mm -hmm. means all disabilities will be represented. In. Yes. We're not talking about wheelchair users or invisible disabilities. We're just talking mm -hmm. about the whole thing. So we want to have a, mm -hmm. and also we also want racial diversity, and, and you know, and social diversity and gender yep. diversity. So all those things are going to come into to play, but only down the line when we actually get the bill passed. So, but at the same time, whilst we're trying to get the bill passed, we can be finding our allies, and within those allies, we can find out like what is you know who are the best people in terms of all sorts of things to actually then do the work. I mean. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a bit like, um, how can I put it? I mean, it, 
if, if I need a, if I have a plumbing emergency at the moment, I'm not going to start going through that kind of process. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, we, we have time to think about that process. Whereas when I have a plumbing emergency, I don't. Does that make? I don't even know that makes sense. But <laughs> but I, I just think yeah, I, I think that we, in, in, in the in the um, in the process of building a coalition to get this bill passed, right? Then you know, with all the different arguments we're going to have, we'll still get the bill passed, and we will have that that kind of representative, um, you know, body that can actually deal with some of the so-called experts in the education department. <laughs> you think they already know it, uh, because well, if they already knew it, well, why didn't they do it? You know, ten years ago. So they don't know it. So it, 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 I think it's about time like we, we took some control of this and, 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 and got the agenda passed. Thank you. Um, anybody else have any other questions? Um, it does not look like there's any questions. So Alan, what I'd like you to do is to come back on and then I would like you to show your video. Well, I think I think we did this last year, but I, but for this for the few people who are left, uh, I'm going to do a quiz, and you have the opportunity. And because you've stayed on so long, you have the opportunity to win a million dollars. Right? Uh, Stop it. Seriously, you have the opportunity to Stop win it. a million dollars, right? And what I'm going to show you a film from 1993 from a Disability Pride March in New York City. And in the chat, tell me who you recognize. And the person who recognizes most people is going to have the chance to win a million dollars. I'm, I'm not joking. Are you, are, you ready? are you ready, folks? Here we go. Start chatting. Hold on. Here we go. Got to share first. I know I'm trying to. Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. Recognize the folks. How many people do you recognize it on this New York City Pride Parade in 1993? Can you, Alan, can you open the screen so it's bigger? The, the right hand corner at the bottom, click that so it's a full screen. Oh, yes. I... There you go. All right. Thank you, Vicki. You're welcome.
get a few people in there oh. i always see some people yeah i mean i just um i just saw eric and i just thought that was so cool i mean the old eric von smedling yes. like part of our group as you know in philly and to see him like just like be one of the people who speaks apart from just in doubt was just awesome yes it was so uh, i don't know who got who won it but whoever won it just let me know uh, the name and address vicky and i'll send them a lot a lottery ticket okay awesome <laughs> Sounds good. Awesome. yeah and you still have a chance of winning the million dollars probably that's more. right yeah so that's go. right thank you so much for <laughs> being disability pride philadelphia you go can't wait to see the movie tonight it's so, uh, so cool. that's what i wanted to announce um they are having technical difficulties Oh. in uh, Williamsport, PA. Um, so they will not be showing the film tonight. But oh. we do promise um, that we are going to make it available and we are going to do a virtual watch party of it very soon for everybody. I do. I make sure that that happens. Um, Good luck with everything, Vicky. Right. And uh, we'll see you. Like, we'll see you back at work soon. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, I want to thank Take uh, care. And thank you everybody for staying staying around. Yeah. So thank you everyone for uh, joining us for another edition of.